I love Bastion. Bastion means rise up. Overwatch 2 Bastion was a hero that I didn't expect to get into, but all of his changes were super fun to play with. He may have been a bit of a meme pick back in Overwatch 1, but going into Overwatch 2, he felt much stronger, even if he wasn't a top pick. Blast forwards to today, and dear god, where have we gone wrong? So yeah, current Bastion is absolutely a problem. But don't worry, I'm sure that Mr. Blizzard is hot on the case with some spicy nerfs to save us from this Bastion Mageddon. What the actual fuck is this? Blizzard just randomly decided to giga buff Bastion and he's just our god now. Like we're all just little teeny peasants beneath his feet, decorating the very ground that he walks upon. Tell me, where did we go so wrong? I'm so glad you asked Heavy from Team Fortress 2. I'll tell you, but in exchange, you and everybody else better like and hit the subscribe button. Is that okay? Yes! Great. Thanks, homies. So, Bastion Mageddon happened in Season 6 when Blizzard gave him a whole sopping list of random buffs. We got A36 Tactical Grenade, Maximum Explosion Damage Falloff reduced by 70% to 50%. Good, I got that. Detonation Time reduced from 0.5 to 0.35 seconds. Yeah, yeah, I got that in the cart too. A uh, recoil adjusted to recover more quickly. I gotta pick that up. That's I, I think that's in the, the bread section. Configuration recon, the reload time reduced from 1.5 to 1.2 seconds. I think we still have some of that at home. I don't think we need it. And configuration artillery, targeting state movement speed increased from 20 to 25 meters per second. Yeah, 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 got that too. Oh, my shopping list is all checked off. But the strongest buff is something that wasn't even on this list. Hero updates. Armor health damage reduction is now additive with other sources of damage reduction and has a maximum cap of 50%. Now this was a change that was meant to combat Arisa and Vermatra in particular. Both of them had ways that they could stack their natural armor damage resistance with abilities, Arisa with Fortify and Vermatra with his block, which would add together multiplicatively to go past the natural cap of 50%. Now different types of damage reduction would add additively and respect the cap of 50%. So now Orisa's max damage resist was 50% with Fortify, and Vermatra's maximum was 75% with Block. The armor would not take it any higher than that. So while this was a nerf for Orisa and Vermatra, this was a buff for Bastion. This took Bastion's total damage reduction while transformed from 44% to 50%. And this is what broke him. Bastion was a hero that I think needed some buffs, but he needed to be completely changed. He needed something new. I had played them, and he was a hero that felt pretty weak on his own, but incredibly strong when being supported and played around by the rest of his team. You slap a pocket on him, maybe Reinhardt Barrier, and he's going to fuck everything up. But alone, he's very liable to just being exploded before he's really able to do anything. So that's what we needed to do with Bastion buffs. We needed to buff solo play Bastion, so he's not ultra-reliant on his team playing around him to be able to do basically anything, while not buffing Bastion when he's supported by a team. And increase damage reduction definitely buffs Bastion when he's being supported by a team. The only change that I actually liked was that transforming into Assault Configuration will give him 50 armor health, because that's actually a change that doesn't matter that much when he's being pocketed because he's probably full health anyways, but does matter if he's trying to play alone or on the flank so he doesn't have to watch out and be like, damn, I'm missing 50 health, guess I can't transform because it's basically completely wasted because I'm not going to be healed back up and I'm not going to have the health to really take advantage of it. And this was the one buff that they removed when trying to nerf him. So I have very little faith in Blizzard's balance department now, so I'm going to try and fix him myself. And the biggest problem is with... Now I mentioned that damage reduction is basically broken if Bastion is being supported by his team, but just to showcase how broken it is, here we have a Soldier 76 ulting a Bastion that's being pocketed by an Ana. As you can see, he tanked basically the entire ultimate and lost almost no health. The Ana was able to outheal literally everything. Heck, even an option that has less healing but is more common as a pocket hero like Mercy is still able to just keep the Bastion alive through a complete Soldier 76 tactical visor 
just by keeping healing beam on him. And again, this Bastion decided to have mercy on Soldier and not just mow him down in half a second. So in an actual game, the soldier's just going to die. He can't kill the Bastion anyways, but even if the Bastion had mercy and didn't kill soldier in half a second, Bastion's not dying, he has 50% damage reduction. He has the maximum amount of damage reduction that a tank hero can have. And while yes, he only has it, well, he also has armor. He has like 100 armor and it's not super difficult to keep him topped up on health, especially if you know his team is actually supporting and playing around him with barriers, peel, healing, a pocket, anything like that. Iliadi was also another problem as he just has a right click that heals 120 health per second. Sir, it's on a resource but it's great for quickly healing up a Bastion to get him back up to that 50% damage reduction. So these two were also kind of enabling each other in a way. So Bastion, after these changes, is a bit better than he was before solo. These are all just straight buffs, but he's now just even more broken and basically impossible to counter without the support of his team. That's also important to note that when transformed, Bastion's crit hitbox moves to his back meaning from the front you can't even deal a critical hit against him. You have to somehow get behind him in order to crit him. This is the one reason why Genzi is such a strong hero right now. He's actually above Bastion in win rate. Because one, flanker is always really good. Mobility is kind of just broken in Overwatch. It's one of the strongest things a hero could have. And also Swift Strike lets him get behind a Bastion easily and start hitting him from the back to actually deal critical damage to try and kill him. And then in addition, he also has Deflect to let him get out easily and also deflect damage back at the Bastion. But especially in Grandmaster, Bastions aren't going to be firing at a Genji with Deflect that often. If they do, it's for like one frame and then they realize Deflect is up and stop. But yeah, Crit Hitbox being completely hidden from any heroes he's fighting from the front is another massive problem that makes Bastion really hard to deal with. It's just that combined with the aforementioned 50% damage resistance. Just as a last little comparison, now a Bastion, while transformed with armor, is now exactly as hard to kill as a fortified Orisa. Both of them have 50% damage resist, and both of them have no critical hit hitbox. At least one that is easily accessible. So what would I do to fix Bastion? Well, aside from small tweaks to his damage maybe, such as slightly reducing it because I don't think it needs to be as high as it is, you could drop it by 10% and it would still be an absolutely ridiculous amount of damage. But that's besides the point because that's all stuff that would have to be dealt with after any major changes, which we are going to do because we are taking his passive Ironclad, which gives him 20% damage resist and throwing it out the fucking window. This hero should not be allowed to have 50% damage resist, so we're just going to get rid of his passive. Now he gets 30% from the armor, and once the armor is gone, he takes full damage, making him easier to kill. But in exchange, we are bringing back something new. Well, something old, but it's new to Overwatch 2. If you looked at the thumbnail, you might know what I'm talking about. Yeah, we're going to bring back self-repair, but as his passive. For my proposal on how his new passive would work, basically whenever Bastion is transformed into Assault Configuration, when he is not firing his weapon, he will automatically start rapidly healing, about at the same rate that he did in Overwatch 1 probably. I believe it was about 70 health per second. A pretty quick heal, but he is wasting time in his Assault Configuration in order to do it. Now, I think this is good, because it's a straight up nerf to the Bastion being supported by a team playstyle, being pocketed and everything that's basically borderline unstoppable right now, and is a buff, a pretty big buff to solo Bastion play, because now it gives him a lot more sustainability on his own. He can't just stay out there dealing damage when he's on his own, but he can re-peak small corners and just keep being an annoyance as he has the cooldown up. Basically, instead of him peeking for a second, taking 200 damage, and then basically just having to leave completely and not being able to do anything without a support to heal him back up, he's now able to just go back behind the corner, heal up for a couple seconds, and then peek again with the last couple seconds of his assault cooldown. Again, I don't know if this is going to make him dead or broken or anything, because it's really something you'd have to see how it affects the game before you do any 
smaller number tweaks or anything like that. But as I said, I do think that they can nerf his assault configuration damage because it's at 360 right now. I think even at 300, it would be pretty damn good. In addition, some tweaks that you could also make are giving him more armor, such as making him 150 health, 150 armor, because I do like armor as a concept because it gives characters good amounts of health to play around that they are more tanky with. It's kind of like a, uh-oh, you're almost out of armor, now you're gonna start taking more damage, you better get to safety. And it would also be good for him to be able to just lose his armor, goes to hide, heals up for a couple seconds, three peaks with his armor back, and then he probably loses form. They could also maybe make his hitbox smaller as well, if it ends up being a problem, because I don't think he needs a massive hitbox. I just don't want him to have 50% damage resist. I think him just having armor is good enough in Overwatch 2, especially since they made armor more consistent at blocking damage. In Overwatch 1, armor was a jank hot mess. It was either almost nothing or 50% damage resist. In Overwatch 1, it worked by reducing damage taken from a source by 50% up to a maximum of 5 damage. This meant that against heroes that have very low damage but high rate of fire, like Tracer, their damage would get completely cut in half. Meanwhile, against heroes with a high single projectile damage, like Pharah Rockets that deal 120, they would just get reduced by 5, so basically nothing at all. Meanwhile, Overwatch 2 armors just a flat 30% damage resist. Ironclad as a passive is very outdated and is enabling him to be pocketed and be near immortal with a pocket, and it's definitely something that they need to change, because it is not fun. It is not even fun to mirror match Bastion because it's just determined by what team is paying attention to their Bastion more. If one Bastion has a pocket and the other doesn't, there's no amount of outskilling that you can do because there's no crit hitbox, you could go for some risky plays trying to burst them down with crits. Nope, you just fire at each other and then the pocketed Bastion will win like 99% of the time. It's not that great. But yeah, I'm a mess so I accidentally deleted my script for this last part so I'm kind of going off nothing at all. So hopefully I didn't forget anything and everything I talked about made sense because this is just something I've thought about for a while considering I've had to deal with this in my games like everyone else has for about two months now. And I just want Bastion to be a fun character to play as and against and I think that taking away his passive and giving himself repair will definitely do that since now as a solo character he has a lot more sustainability and can re-peak after healing up a bit but that uses time off of his transformation, which is the only reason why he's good. I like how he's a character that has this one cooldown that's temporary that makes him very threatening, and then is somewhat mediocre but still okay the rest of the time. It's fun. And then of course, with a pocket, that passive will basically do nothing because he's probably always going to be firing. If he's being pocketed and supported by a team, that kind of best in playstyle, he's just going to be straight up nerfed. He's going to be missing 20% of his damage resist, which is pretty major. Going back to the example with Soldier 76 alt, if we have Bastion not transformed to simulate what it would feel like if he didn't have his passive, you can see that this is a very different clip. The Bastion actually fucking dies, or at least gets close to it. So yeah, I don't want to repeat myself forever, so I think I'll call it there. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe if you enjoy Overwatch, and until next time, see ya. Also, thank you for 2,000 subscribers. I never thanks people, but it means a lot to me that people enjoy these videos I make. I just really enjoy talking about the game, so really, thank you a lot. See ya.